On September 4th, 1981, Judy Butler, residing in the same apartment complex as her sister Linda, excitedly headed to her place. Eagerly knocking on the front door, she kept waiting for what seemed like an eternity. Linda never answered. Disappointed, Judy turned to leave when suddenly her eyes caught a glimpse of Linda's window. It was wide open and devoid of a screen. When she looked inside, she couldn't help but scream in horror. Linda's lifeless body lay on the bed. She had been brutally murdered. This marked the beginning of the chilling case of Linda Slayton that cast a haunting shadow over the entire family, lingering for decades until the culprit was finally identified. This is her tragic tale. Linda Slayton, a strong 31-year-old woman, had her family at the center of her universe. She was a single mom with two sons, and they'd recently moved from Hartsell, Alabama to Lakeland, Florida, seeking a fresh start after Linda's divorce. Despite living on a tight budget and receiving state assistance, Linda was known for being a caring mother to her two sons. 15-year-old Jeffrey and 12-year-old Timothy loved their mother. After all, she was their rock. But for Linda, the emotional anchor in her life was her sister Judy. The two shared a special bond, often finding solace in each other's company during their cherished Friday morning coffee dates. The absence of a car didn't dampen their spirits either. Instead, it brought the family closer as they embraced local trips on bicycles and Timothy's football coach, Joseph Mills, played a supportive role by offering rides to and from practice. And I looked up to this guy. He was my assistant football coach. I ride to the games, rides to practice. Linda's parents lived approximately 10 miles away and visited often. They were all a happy family. Little did they know that they would soon be plunged into their worst nightmare. On the morning of Friday, September 4th, 1981, Judy Butler excitedly arrived at the Slayton's home for their usual coffee date. To her surprise, there was no answer after she knocked on the front door. Concerned, Judy circled the outside of the apartment and noticed something unsettling. The window screen in her sister's bedroom was missing. And I turn and I see that the screen is out of the window. When she peeped inside, she was petrified. Linda lay on the bed in a distressing state with her clothes disheveled and a wire wrapped around her neck. Overwhelmed by shock, Judy screamed in terror. Her sister had been murdered. And at first I thought maybe she was asleep. And then, then I just started screaming. John Allen, an apartment maintenance worker, came across the distraught Judy and immediately called 911 for help. Investigators and emergency personnel swiftly arrived, finding the front door locked. They entered through a window and discovered Linda Slayton on her bed. The scene was horrifying. Her dress was pulled down, the hem was lifted, and there was blood all around her body. A wire coat hanger was wrapped around her neck. Despite the disturbing state of Linda's surroundings, there were no signs of a struggle. Nothing seemed out of place in the whole apartment. The medical examiner's findings were harrowing. Linda had endured a brutal assault, and her official cause of death was determined to be manual strangulation. In the aftermath, her body became a crucial source of biological DNA evidence. Crime scene technicians combed through Linda's bedroom, revealing additional clues and a palm print on the windowsill. Despite these efforts, when all the findings were entered into the national database, no matches surfaced. The killer was a mystery, and nobody knew anything about him. You can't lose your mom no worse than we lost our mom. It's a nightmare I wouldn't wish on nobody. I love you, bro. However, the investigators left no stone unturned. They conducted interviews with everyone who might have known or crossed paths with Linda. 
DNA samples were collected from a wide array of individuals spanning family, neighbors, co-workers, even Linda's ex-husband. However, despite the extensive efforts over the years, no matches and no conclusive evidence emerged, and the case eventually went cold. For years, Linda's killer remained a mystery, but 2018 finally brought some hope thanks to the advanced DNA technology. The investigators decided to take help from a new method called genetic genealogy, which ultimately became a game changer in solving this murder. The forensic experts successfully connected the dots by matching the DNA profile developed from the evidence collected in 1981 to a Joseph Clinton Mills, who happened to be Timothy Slayton's football coach. Yes, you heard that right. The very coach who used to give him rides home. Mills was just 20 years old at the time of Linda's murder. The investigators had questioned him during the initial probe into the murder, but at that time he denied any knowledge of the crime. Fast forward to the recent breakthrough with genetic genealogy, investigators were on to him. To confirm the match, they kept a close eye on Mills, hoping he'd slip up. But when that didn't happen, they took matters into their own hands, grabbing his household trash from the curb before the garbage truck could haul it away. In that trash treasure hunt, they struck gold, a piece of medical tape containing DNA. This crucial find was rushed to the FDLE crime lab, where it was compared to the genetic profile from 1981. The result? You guessed it a positive match. Mills was Slayton's killer. The hunt for justice had finally caught up with the man who once denied any involvement in her murder. Joseph Mills was arrested on December 12th, 2018. The detectives pieced together what they thought happened on September 3rd, 1981. Joseph had driven Timothy home from football practice. Later that evening, Jeffrey went to his grandparents' house and Linda accompanied Timothy to a neighborhood party. During this time away, detectives believe Mills slipped into the home undetected through Linda's bedroom window. He hid in her closet, patiently waiting for the family to return. Linda and Timothy were the first to arrive back home. Timothy went to bed, and Linda busied herself tidying up the house. And while she was doing the dishes, Jeffrey returned home and headed to bed. Once Linda finished her chores, she entered her bedroom, and that's when Mills launched his attack. Detectives suspect that the wire coat hanger used in the assault came from Linda's bedroom closet. Mills brutally attacked and ultimately strangled her to death. After Linda's tragic death, her sons moved in with her parents. During this time, Mills, incredibly, continued offering rides to and from football practice to Timothy. Strangely, he would frequently inquire about any updates or developments in the case, though there was never any news to share. The man responsible for the crime was lurking in plain sight. I like he was my friend. And he was one of the last people on my radar. But after decades, Linda finally found justice. Before we move ahead, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with new developments in cases that have been haunting everyone for years. Mills was charged with first degree murder, burglary, and battery. But Mills was still in denial. During the trial, he first denied everything spinning a wild tale, but nobody bought it. Then, finally, on February 9th, 2022, Mills pleaded guilty to murdering Linda Slayton. He got four life sentences with no chance of parole, but he managed to dodge the death penalty by pleading guilty. Mills is currently serving his sentence at the Reception and Medical Center, Union County, Florida. The revelation of the real killer undoubtedly brought a mix of relief and profound betrayal for Linda's family. I, I just want to know why, Joe. Why'd you take my mama from me? I love my mama. We was happy. Her sons even had a photo of Mills 
hanging on their wall for years. The shock of learning that someone they trusted was responsible for such a heinous crime it must have been devastating. Keeping his betrayal in mind, does this escape from the death penalty sound fair? Share your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.